Are you the greatest Canadian player ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is? Um, mm, I'd say uh, currently playing probably is uh, Tiba Hutchinson. I would uh, say he's probably one of the best uh, right. Canadians he's played. Hard to argue. The most capped Canadian player, also captain in Canada for 30 plus games. Obviously, we have to talk about the Canadian uh, men's national team, starting with the Gold Cup win in 2000. Um, how was that like? I mean, you guys came up against some real good teams, uh, Colombia, Trinidad, South Korea. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, it was one of those tournaments where we probably weren't, uh, weren't the best team, uh, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. We were... Uh, uh, but it was a it was a tournament where each result we got better and better throughout the, the throughout throughout it, and uh, most of, most of the time a, a winning team in a tournament usually has that uh, trend where they're getting better and better throughout the tournament. I you know no doubt about it in the final even against Colombia we, we you, no one could argue that we weren't the better side against them. You know we were right. a little bit lucky against Trinidad for, without a doubt. Uh, Craig Force you know made a number of saves stood on his head and deserved to all the all the plaudits that he got was he was fantastic for us uh, but in the final against Colombia I think we were definitely the better team uh, on the day so it was you know it was a tremendous tournament and uh, one that we can always uh, remember with uh, fond memories right uh, speaking of, uh, of Forrest, it, does the team still kind of get together? Do you have any connections with Vos, Forrest? Do you guys ever get together? We saw, uh, we had the, uh, this year actually we saw, um, well, a little while ago actually, when they had the, uh, the, the Hall of Fame uh, dinner, the team was ele elected into the Hall of Fame. So it was good to see a lot of the guys. Uh, then we saw a lot of the f uh, uh, former players that were in that group that came together for the for the ceremony in the Hall of Fame. So it was good to see them. But uh, you know, you'll see them in the soccer community, uh, you know, often anyway. Right. How do you feel um, the Canadian men's national team is compared to back then? Right now, do you feel they've regressed? Do you feel they're go moving in the right direction? Well, you'd like to see the hopefully that we're yes moving in the right direction. I think uh, it is it's difficult in Canada. There's no real clear cut answers on to you know no one has a crystal ball to say this is the way we have to do things and and and, and get better. It's it, we have a challenging uh, environment, a challenging country where you know for for six months of the year, especially in uh, in Ontario, Quebec, it's difficult to play uh, uh, for the young kids. You know you have to have facilities like this one. And we don't have enough of them, and that's that's a major a major problem in uh, in in Canada uh, facilities and having kids being able to play, uh, you know, not once a week, but uh, three four times a week throughout the indoor season, uh, and that's just financially not the case because it's just so expensive. So well, well, some people say one of the main problems is that players elect not to play for Canada who are eligible. You've got Jonathan De Guzman, Owen Hargreaves, uh, Asmir Begovic, Junior Hoyle. I mean, what needs to change so? The, the, men, the Canadian men's national can attract these players and well it's difficult on an individual individual basis all these guys besides Jun, uh, Junior that are playing uh, have played with you know big European clubs uh, uh, sorry big European countries which enables them to have uh, you know probably individually more of a su successful career over in Europe it's such easier the travels a lot easier mm -hmm. so there's a number of factors that that, that lean that way uh, obviously, with the with the four of them in our national team for the last number of years, would we have been that much better? I mean, obviously, when you do the math, uh, you know, four out of the ten of them would be playing on the pitch would be you know something much much different some of the time for us. Um, so it was unfortunate that that's the way it is, but you know, you're never going to stop that. And uh, with our country being uh, so diverse, a lot of players have uh, grow up with different passports mm -hmm. and. Uh, have opportunities to play other other countries for other countries, so you're never going to really stop that. You just have to uh, deal with the players that we have, and we have to, you know, somehow continue to try and, and and get better than we were before. And it's it is it's a lot. It's very challenging, without a doubt. I mean, you'd agree that when when they see a more of a chance of winning or or being more competitive with the Canadian men's national, that would help. I mean, the U.S. has done this with a lot of players where they've they've managed to attract them to the U.S. national team. Is that mainly because they're slightly more competitive, there's more chance of winning? They're more, they're, they're definitely, I mean, there's no There's no hidden fact that they're more successful than uh, we've been in the last uh, 15 years. It's, uh, there's no, you know, no doubt about that. Um, whether they've been more successful in luring their players um, back to, to the U.S., I, I would argue the fact that, let's argue it when, when one player has a, an opportunity to play for Holland, Right. Uh, or the U.S., and then we'll make a decision on which. Uh, then we'll see which country they 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 pick. 
or Portugal or Italy or uh, name a big uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Germany, for example. The players that are choosing them, I'm not going to you know label each player and, and know each individual case, but the, I would I would bet my uh, bottom dollar that most of them aren't uh, won't be regular players in uh, in a big country. So then it becomes a much more different argument uh, in learning your players. Yeah, I can imagine. Did uh, you have any particular teams that you followed? Maybe players that influenced you? I always said I, I, I one of my uh, favorite players when I grew up was uh, was Paolo Maldini. Watching him play as a, as, a, as a defender, as a fullback as well, uh, was a fantastic player. Uh, Roberto Baggio was another big uh, uh, player. I was a big fan of uh, also growing up with. Did you mold your game style more to the Maldini or the Baggio? No, I wouldn't say mold them to to any of them. I just enjoyed their their quality. I mean, uh, more throughout my career, at the end of my you know the last little bit of my career because. Uh, when I finished uh, playing in the last five or six seasons as a fullback, but uh, with with uh, Maldini, but he was uh, you know something different, a special player. I mean, you know. of course. So you ended up playing for Clemson University for one year. How was that experience? It was good. I mean, I went down there on a on a scholarship for for a season, but uh, I realized you know, with, with all honesty, I realized if I stayed there for four years. Chances of me playing in Europe uh, would be much, much more limited than if I had uh, than if I left and and and, and uh, tried another avenue, which was uh, coming back to to Toronto and playing with the with the Toronto Lynx for a season, and then after that, going I you know was fortunate enough to go over to Europe. Then that wasn't the plan yet right away, but I knew just back thinking about it, four years at at uh, university would be a lot tougher to 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 go overseas after that. So I decided to. Uh, to leave after the one year, just mainly because of that. But I had a good experience, and we had a good. Uh, it's a fantastic university with unbelievable facilities and uh, uh, great, uh, great, uh, great athletic uh, system that they have there, right through through all their different sports. So it was, uh, it was good. Got a couple questions from uh, Werder Bremen fans. Um, so from uh, Christian Geppert, um did Paul hear us screaming "Paul" every time he touched the ball? Uh, Christian says he remembers your first game against Cottbus, and you were one of two Canadians playing that day. Yeah, I mean that you know, that that memory will uh, will last a lifetime for sure. It was one of my best buddies uh, playing on with Cottbus, uh, Kevin McKenna. So we both made our uh, our professional debuts that day, and we both were the you know the first Canadians to be playing in the Bundesliga. So you know it was a fantastic a uh, fantastic day and uh, something that. Uh, I always hold over them that uh, we got them on the day anyway. <laughs> and uh, from Radio Free Vesa, which is a Werder Bremen podcast, um, what is Paul's fondest memory of the 03 04 double winning season, and who is his favorite goalkeeper to play in front of? Um, well, the, the best memory, obviously, we, it's an easy one when we beat Munich uh, in Munich to win the, to win the title. We were down, a, we, we were under pressure a little bit, we were leading the campaign for. I, I can't remember from which uh, which week very early on, and we had a big. Our gap was uh, we had a big gap on uh, on on Bayern, and they managed to just uh, pull it back to within I think it was uh, six points uh, going into that game, with only about four to go. So if we lose that, we're down to three, and then we got some tough games at home. We had a tough game at home against Leverkusen, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, a couple of uh, tough uh, road games as well. After that, so it would have been really tough for us uh, mentally to recover. You know, I'm not saying nothing. You know, we, we might have ended up winning it without a doubt. We still had a good, decent cushion, but that game was uh, was pressure for us to to come away with a good result. And uh, we were three nil three nil up after uh, I think it was uh, 40 minutes or 30 30 something odd minutes. So that was uh, without a doubt the the most special moment of the 2003 2004 uh, championship. Um, in your first season with Spurs, um, the team did really really well. Um, you were so, so close to finishing top four and only to be waylaid by allegedly some lasagna. Um, it can't be as simple as that. What really happened? I don't know. I was injured. Uh, literally, I was, I was injured the, the week before, so I, would, I didn't play the... I wasn't fit for the... We had a bunch of... The problem is we had a bunch of injuries. I, my Ledley was injured. Uh, uh, f two, three other players that were in the... In the the first eleven were were injured for the game, and so I'm not sure what happened on the away trip. Uh, it was you know it was a away trip. It was uh, it was London uh, against West Ham, but I'm not sure what happened at the hotel. Uh, I don't think it was a uh, you know 
probably definitely wasn't a, a lasagna, <laughs> but uh, you know, you, one thing gets out and uh, it goes from there. But you know, we definitely had a lot of players uh, ill at the time, and we weren't uh, definitely were not full strength. And if we were. Maybe a different result uh, on the day without a doubt, but, you know, we were very, very close and we had a fantastic season and, uh, you know, we were at that time, you know, to break into that top four, uh, I know it's happened a couple of times uh, after that, but the, those four teams at that moment uh, in England were, were miles ahead of, uh, of the rest of uh, the Premiership teams, so we were very, very close, but, you know, just a little short. Was that goal, the one against West Ham, the highlight of your career? No, no, no. <laughs> it was a great goal. It was a, a one that you, you know, one thing with the English is, uh, which is great from them, is that they, you know, they never forget what uh, what players do for their clubs in big moments and in big games, and uh, they you know, they remember the history of their club and their players uh, for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So that's something all credit to the English for that. And, uh, you know, it was a great, uh, uh, fantastic game, London Derby, and, uh, you know, we came out on top of a, of a game that, um, in the end of the season, I think voted uh, probably uh, was the best game of the year. So, no, that moment, fantastic, but not, uh, um, to say, the highlight of, a, of my career. No, I would uh, definitely lean towards the team, team accomplishments before my individual ones. My friend David actually wanted uh, me to give you a kiss for that goal, but I'm going to spare you. The player you played with? You mentioned Ledley King before. Uh, Ledley, definitely the best uh, defender I've played with. Um, striker, it's easier. I, I probably answered in positions, probably. Sure. But Ledley, definitely the best uh, uh, defender. Uh, midfielder, Yohan Miku uh, in Bremen, French footballer, fantastic, uh, brilliant football player. And striker is a tough one. I, play, I was fortunate to play with some fantastic ones. Uh, Berbatov. Defoe, Keane, uh, Ailton, Pizarro. We had uh, a number of uh, real uh, strong, strong, real high quality strikers. So it was difficult. That's a difficult one to answer the strikers. Goalkeeper? Goalkeeper. Uh, maybe I'll say Craig Forrest is one of the best I, I played with, mm -hmm. with Canada. I'll have to say that Craig was a, a you know, fantastic keeper.